Mount Olive by Lawrence Durrell As a junior of exceptional promise, Mount Olive had been sent to Egypt for a year in order to improve his Arabic and found himself attached to the High Commission as a sort of scribe to await his first diplomatic posting. But he was already conducting himself as a young Secretary of Legation, fully aware of the responsibilities of future office. Only somehow today it was rather more difficult than usual to be reserved, so exciting had the fish drive become. He had quite forgotten about his once crisp tennis flannels and the fact that the wash of bilge had toe-capped his white plimsolls with a black stain. In Egypt one seemed to forget oneself continually like this. He blessed the chance letter of introduction which had brought him to the Hosnani lands, to the rambling old-fashioned house built upon a network of lakes and embankments near Alexandria. The punt which carried him was turning slowly to take up its position in the great semicircle of boats, gradually closing in upon a target area marked out by the black reed spines of fish pans. As they closed in, the Egyptian night fell. The sudden reduction of all objects to bas relief upon a screen of gold and violet. Voices, too, across the waters of Mariotis sounded now loud, now soft and clear. Dusk. Yet it was still hot. His shirt stuck to his back. Out of sight he could hear the splatter of geese as a flight rose, trailing its webs across the estuary, honking crassly. Mount Olive sighed and stared down into the brown water, chin on his hands. He was unused to feeling so happy. Youth is the age of despair. Behind him he could hear the hair-lipped younger brother, Naruz, grunting at every thrust of the pole. Drafts of wind from the far sea-line ebbed around them from time to time, refreshing the mind. "'Naruz,' he said, "'I'm so happy.' The youth gave his shy, hissing laugh and said, "'But this is nothing. Wait, we are closing in.' Mount Olive smiled. Sample complete. Ready to continue?